Hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Dr. Rizwan Qureshi. I'm one of the consultants in emergency medicine and today I'm going to discuss with you a very important and very interesting case. A case that highlights the fact that prevention is really better than cure. On a Sunday morning a few weeks ago, I came across a patient, a 45-year-old lady who presented with some shortness of breath. The nurses said to me that, look, you need to see her early and because she looks quite sick. So as I went into her cubicle, she was actually quite visibly short of breath. One thing that caught my eye was on the monitor, her blood pressure reading was 240 by 140. I began to ask her some question. At the same time, we were just checking and rechecking the blood pressure across the right side and the left side, making sure there's not some sort of discrepancy. And she was telling me that uh, she has been unwell for about a week and she was just started off by feeling some tiredness and lethargy. And in the last few days, she's just become so short of breath and she's noticed her legs are swelling up and she looks more puffy. I inquired then about if she's ever had any other symptoms um, and I was trying to inquire about any evidence of end organ damage, any headache, any paresthesia on the face, arms, legs, any slurred speech or vision problems and she said none at all. There were no other symptoms to suggest any triggers either. In terms of past medical history, I asked her if she's ever had a blood pressure again to which she said in one of the last pregnancy which was about at least eight years ago, she was uh, picked up as having a uh, blood pressure which was high. She was medicated at one point she was checked and followed up by the GP and the blood pressure was okay and she never thought to pursue that. I said to her that have you ever had your blood pressure checked in in the recent months and she said she had a flu jab uh, a few months ago and at that point the blood pressure was taken at the GP practice and at that point the blood pressure was completely normal. We did a venous blood gas and it showed that she has got uh, quite a severe acidosis. Her pH was 7.2 her bicarbonate was 9 and her creatinine was over 700. So she had an evidence of end organ damage in two main ways. She had obviously decompensated heart failure which was causing pulmonary edema um, and also some right-sided heart failure presenting with the peripheral edema or also an acute renal failure. She had a sinus tachycardia. It wasn't that she was an underlying flutter or uh, atrial fibrillation. I did a bedside icon and uh, I can share with you some of the images that you can see on the screen here is that uh, you can see that myocardium appears very chunky. So it goes on reflecting that her blood pressure might have been there for, uh, for, for a duration of time. It's not something that she'd been unwell for about a week and then she developed some shortness of breath afterwards and now she's got a decomposite heart failure. This chunky myocardium with concentric LVH shows that the blood pressure rise might have been there at least for a few months if not years. In terms of this patient, I gave her a dose of metoprolol. I gave her 25 milligrams of metoprolol. I gave her some hydralazine and got her on GTN infusion. My targets at this time, obviously I'm dealing with a condition called hypertensive emergency. Target here is to bring down the MAP initially to about 10% in the first hour. And that needs to be done obviously gradually in the first hour. You can't just boom drop the blood pressure. Um, and I, my selection of drugs, as I said, was metoprolol because she was tachycardic and hypertensive. I thought that will help me. Plus, hydrolazine is a parenteral agent. You can give it intravenously and you can titrate the effect. So I gave her 5 milligram dose. And then she was still hypertensive, so started on her GTN infusion because in that way, you can titrate. At that point, I called the renal physicians over at the tertiary hospital. Based on their recommendation, we started on prazosin. We had her on a calcium channel blocker. We also now started on sodium nitroprusside infusion. The target now was to bring her blood pressure down gradually over the period of next 24 hours and within that time we need to monitor her in intensive care unit. Interestingly enough I was working a few weeks later at that hospital and that patient presented to emergency department entirely for a different reason. She immediately recognized me and came up to me and said that uh, doctor you look after me uh, when I was in that smaller hospital and send me over here. And, uh, you know, I'm on dialysis now. My heart broke at that time. This was a young uh, lady. She had four kids and now she's on dialysis. Um, and uh, she had a fistula and there were some problems with the fistula and that's why she presented to emergency department. And uh, this goes on showing that the blood pressure is a silent killer. In majority of population, the blood pressure is one of those things uh, which just goes on in the background silently and causes all its damage till it's too late. So please look after yourself and check your blood pressure periodically. So talking about blood pressure management in an emergency department, we get patients like this 40-year-old lady who are overtly symptomatic, who've got a very high blood pressure reading. Um, they are called hypertensive emergency. Then 
you need to act upon these patients immediately. You need to bring the mean arterial pressure down initially by about 10% or 15% and rest of the blood pressure down by about another 15% over the next 24 hours. Obviously, monitoring them for an on end organ damage, making sure that they haven't got any stroke symptoms, acute myocardial uh, infarction symptoms, or any other end organ damage in terms of kidney damage and so forth. The second kind of patient that we get are known hypertensive patient and they are on antihypertensive uh, medication. Uh, they are somewhat called hypertensive urgency. They would present with the blood pressure readings of 180, 190 systolic. The diastolic would also be raised by 110 and they would come with symptoms, a, a barrage and spectrum of symptoms. They would have either headaches or epistaxis or chest pain which is resolved now. They may have had initially some paresthesia on the left arm or left leg or some sort of slurred speech or which is all resolved by now and here you are scratching your head that this is a patient who has got known uh, high blood pressure, did present with a stroke type symptoms. Sometimes they get, get admitted for a stroke workup. Sometimes they get admitted because if they're presented with resolved chest aid, they get serial troponin and all that end organ damage exclusion pathway. The management of these patients again is quite simple. You try to bring the MAPS down by again 25%. 25% is a magic number in terms of reduction of blood pressure. And you tend to do that slowly and gradually with a number of hours, not in a matter of minutes, by giving them an extra dosage of their same antihypertensive that they're on or I tend to give them an additional dose of very safe antihypertensive medication like amlodipine. Uh, the third type of patients are what we call asymptomatic hypertensive patients. These are the kind of patients who will have a blood pressure monitors at home. They may have gone to the GPs for a completely different reason, would have their blood pressure check and it would be high and not just high, it would be significantly high. And we do tend to, you know, screen them out and then treat them if the blood pressure still remains high. The idea is to pick up the end organ damage. That's almost always the eventual goal if there's no evidence of end organ damage and this blood pressure has already started to come down and they've got no active symptoms these patients can be managed as an outpatient so what do you do when you are sending the patients who presented the issue with the hypertensive urgency or asymptomatic hypertension they've got no active symptoms their blood pressure is now normalized and all of their preliminary workup in emergency department is normal well you can manage them as an outpatient but before you send them give them advice on three main things Number one, lifestyle changes. Low salt diet and be compliant with your medication. And also, check your blood pressure periodically. And if it's high, either go to the, back to your GP. But if you've got symptoms with the high blood pressure, come back to emergency. Number two, they must be followed with a cardiologist. The cardiologist can do an echocardiogram. They can assess their heart muscles, making sure there's no hypertrophy of the heart muscles. There's no valvular problem. There's no signs of decompensated or, or compensated heart failure, which could be picked up early on, especially in the patients who are asymptomatic. Third, they need to remain under an active follow-up, especially for an example of that 40-year-old lady who was lost to follow-up. The patients who've got high blood pressure, they can mount an other high blood pressure without any symptoms. So make sure that they understand the importance of following up with a GP at least at four weeks, six weeks and eight weeks mark. They can have their blood pressure checked. They can have the basic screening tools of having the ECG done, urine checked and base level blood done once at least in that period of time. And also if the blood pressure readings is normalized then they can be down titrated from their medication based on their blood pressure reading especially if they're getting any side effect of that blood pressure medication or they can be up titrated or a secondary antihypertensive added if their blood pressure is still high um, this is a very sad example of one of a very preventable diseases and a major killer this patient obviously had high blood pressure associated with pregnancy at one point um, she was medicated and then once blood pressure normalized after the end of the pregnancy she did not pursue that further and at at some point uh, she must have become hypertensive again slowly and gradually she went into a heart failure it became a decompensated heart failure it became an acute kidney injury and now this patient has got decompensated heart failure to live with and also she's a dialysis patient at the age of 40. her life has completely changed in a matter of a week so in summary hypertensive emergency is obviously a critical issue it's one of those things that which needs to be acted upon immediately. The initial targets is to bring the MAP down by about 10 to 15% in the first hour. Often the choice of antihypertensive agent is parenteral and you can start them safely on hydralazine and give them a beta blocker. And you can also start them on infusion 
So it can be up titrated and down titrated based on their MAP readings. And the infusion that we normally use are either glycerol trinitrate infusion or sodium nitroprusside infusion. They need to be monitored in intensive care unit or high dependency unit. Hypertensive urgency are the patients who are presented with a high blood pressure reading and they may have initial symptoms which have now resolved but they have got no evidence of end organ damage. These patients can be managed as an outpatient but they would still need some sort of control of their blood pressure. They need follow-up. They need to have a better surveillance of any underlying end organ damage, follow up with the cardiologist doing an echo. And asymptomatic hypertensive are the patient who can be easily managed in the emergency department. They just need a bit of surveillance, recheck, making sure there's no end organ damage. Uh, you can give them an additional dose of their own regular usual antihypertensive medication and then they can be followed up and keep on following up with the GP so they don't become from symptomatic to urgency to a decompensated end organ damage patient. Look after yourself, look after each other. Thank you very much.